Thanks, Gordon. Uh, this is the fifth part of our series on uh, anti-aging. This is on uh, nutritional age to boost your health and longevity. I'm Dr. Robert True, you probably know me, um, in Colleyville, Texas. Anti-aging. Well, what is anti-aging? It doesn't mean we're going to prevent you from stopping to get older. It is prevention. It's doing the things that help you to become more healthy, to become well, staying fit, and looking good and feeling good. That's what we want to do, and by doing that, maybe we can look a little and feel a little younger. It's producing health and youthfulness in people. That's what people want, and that's what we try to do. Um, a lot of people say, oh, anti-aging. Well, I just plan on living forever, and, you know, so far, so good. But then it's, it's a little bit different than that. Anti-aging means things that we can do to decrease the degenerative processes that cause the appearance of our older age. <clears throat> As we get older, our bodies go through a wear and tear process. We call that the aging process. And then <clears throat> we, we want to think about aging, anti-aging concepts are things that we can do to help slow down or even reverse these concepts of, of aging. Degenerative processes can occur on the outside and the inside. On the outside, we see things like changes in our face as we get older, our skin changes, our body changes. We get a different distribution of fat that's different. Our muscle tone kind of gets a little weak. We don't have the same muscle tone like we did when we were younger. Our vitality decreases, libido. All those things decrease and our performance decreases. That's what we see on the outside. But there's a lot of changes that occur on the inside that we call anti-aging. They're degenerative processes on the brain, the heart, blood vessels, bones, mass, uh, muscles, on the fat. And generally speaking, when those things happen, you get diseases and you get a bit worse quality of life. So we want to improve our quality of life, and that's what anti-aging is all about. We like to look at, at aging as a disease, just like we do anything else. Well, first of all, we always ask people, well, what are your concerns? What, what are your problems that you're having? And we want to evaluate your problems. We want to diagnose the conditions that you might have. Let's formulate a plan, a plan for treatment or a correction of your problems, and in this case, an anti-aging plan that will help you to improve your health. And then let's implement the plan and create some sort of a maintenance program so you can keep those ideas going for as long as you can. So, what are your concerns? Are your concerns a facial concern, a body concern? Are you concerned about your weight, maybe a hormonal issue, or just a generalized health? Because our goal is to help you to enhance your natural beauty both on the inside and the outside. This is the fifth of a five-part series on anti-aging. This is on nutritional aids to boost health and longevity. The other ones we've done, once a month we've done a, a seminar on anti-aging and if you uh, want to see them they're on the web, uh, they're on YouTube, you can look at my website trimd.com and you can look them up there too. So during this next hour we're going to discuss several factors. First of all, what's killing us? We're going to talk about the theories of aging, we're going to talk about antioxidants, immune modulators or immune boosters, and how that affects our aging process and degenerative process that happen in our body. We're going to talk about hormone therapy and how that will help very briefly. Uh, we had done, uh, I have done a whole uh, lecture on that in the past and it's on the web. We are going to discuss telomerase uh, and how shortening of the telomeres make us grow older faster. We're going to discuss how nutrition and exercise help you to keep younger and what you should do on that. And we're going to talk about things that you should take, like supplements, that will help you with your anti-aging uh, concepts. Let's talk about what causes us to die. Well, as you can see on this screen here, uh, about 75% of the time we die after the age of 65. Well, it's good in a way, but it's not good if you're getting close to 65. So <laughs> you want to live as long as you can. Then the other uh, circle on this screen talks about the causes of death. And you notice you can almost split it down the middle and you've got heart disease is the number one and cancer is the number two cause of death. But then there's these other ones over here, kind of a miscellaneous thing, diabetes, Alzheimer's, uh, injuries, uh, CLRRD means uh, chronic lung disease, and stroke. Those are all degenerative processes, just like cancer is, just like heart disease. So you could kind of say that most of us are going to die of some sort of degenerative process uh, in our lifetime. So if there's something we can do to decrease that, wouldn't that be a wonderful thing? Let's start with cancer. This is a very um, 
informative slide because we're going to look at the leading causes of cancer and the killers of cancer. At the very top, we have lung cancer. Big one, huge. We kind of know what we can do to, talk, to decrease that. Down below that, we have breast on one side and prostate on the other side. That's the second one. There's ovaries and there's a bunch of miscellaneous ones there too. But what can we do? Well, the first one is lung cancer. So all you gotta do is stop smoking. We don't, people need to stop smoking because it's bad for their health. They have a high risk of lung cancer. But then not only that, there's increased risk of a lot of other things. Cardiovascular disease is worsened. Just about anything is worsened if you can't, if you smoke. So therefore, that's the number one thing we can do to decrease the, the um, risk of us dying of these degenerative processes from smoking. Let's kind of look at which ones of these cancers are induced by smoking. Number one, of course, is lung disease. We know about that. But so is colon cancer, and that's, that's increased. And also cancer of the pancreas. Cancer of the pancreas is increased if you smoke too. The other two down there uh, from, from smoking are esophagus, cancer of the esophagus. We probably know about that. And then the other one is bladder. Well, what happens is all those things, that, those toxic elements that you bring into your body when you smoke, it's filtered through the kidneys, and where does it concentrate? It concentrates in your bladder. So it's, it would be logical to realize that bladder cancer is increased too if you smoke. But here's the next thing that you can do. Decrease your weight. Being overweight, obesity is probably one of the, it's probably even worse than cancer. We'll talk about that a little bit. But visceral fat is probably the worst, and that's the kind that's in the middle. That's the kind that's uh, sticking out. The widow maker, we talked about that earlier, the widow maker. And if you have an increased, uh, if you have obesity, you have an increased risk of cancer, heart disease, cognitive dysfunction, diabetes. So we say start a waste disposal program today. Get rid of your waste and get rid of that extra weight there. That's a very important thing to do. Let's look at all the different cancers that are increased if you are overweight or obese. A lot more reds there, aren't there? A lot more reds. We're looking at things like breast cancer, colon cancer, prostate cancer, pancreas, ovary, liver, uh, uterus, bladder. All those things are increased if you are overweight. And you probably say, well, there's a lot more red on this one than there was on the other one about the smoking. And guess what? You're right. Because now, obesity is the leading cause of cancer in the United States. About 1 in 12 new cases of cancer are secondary to people having too much weight. So if there's something you can do, get rid of the weight. What causes heart disease? Well, we talked similar things. Uh, smoking does, uh, obesity, lack of exercise. Increased bad cholesterol, we heard about that. Genetics, they can do it. But why do they do that? Why do these things cause problems, cause degenerative diseases? And how do these things begin? And what can we do to prevent it? Because they will age us prematurely. So really, how do we age? Well, it goes right down to the DNA. And there are multiple contributing factors, and we're going to discuss each one of these. During this, now, this hour lecture, we're going to talk about free radical formations or antioxidants and how antioxidants will help. We're going to talk about inflammation, how uh, as we get older, the inflammatory process gets worse. You get excess inflammation, which results in degenerative processes, and that you need immune boosters or anti-inflammatory agents, things that will increase the efficiency of your, of your immune system. We're going to discuss hormone decline and the fact that if you have less hormones, you have an increased risk of degenerative processes. So you need supplementation, we believe, and we do a lot of hormone therapy and we'd highly recommend it. We're, talking about this, we're going to talk about the shortening of your telomeres. It's kind of a new concept in anti-aging. We're going to discuss that thoroughly and how boosting the ability to lengthen your telomeres will help you to live longer. So let's start. You know, we're going to talk about the DNA and you know that's, it's that uh, long, twisty, ropey, ladder type thing that we've all learned about when we were in school. DNA stands for deoxyribonucleic acid and it's the building block of all of our cells. Aging starts right with the DNA. There's several theories about aging. The first theory we're going to talk about is oxidative stress. 
What is oxidative stress? Well, as we go through life, our body goes through a series of insults. And these insults produce something called free radicals or free electrons that are kind of destructive. Oxidation means to, like, to rust a piece of iron. If you get a piece of iron, you throw it out in the rain, pretty soon it rusts and it can stain or, or damage the cement or whatever it's on. Well, the same thing happens in our bodies when, as we get, um, as we age, we form these free radicals that destroy parts of our membranes, parts of our DNA, and it causes little breaks in the membranes, breaks in the DNA, and that can result in damage to the cells, and they could either die or be, the cells can not function properly. So, aging process, uh, as we get older, there's a decreased ability for us to cope with these oxidative stresses over time. Therefore, we may need to ingest an adequate amount of antioxidants in order to neutralize these free radicals and to help prevent that damage from occurring. Theory two of aging, inflammation excess. And really, research is indicating now that the root of, of many of our healthcare problems may be secondary to chronic inflammatory processes. Uh, inflammation is strongly linked to diabetes, uh, coronary artery disease, to chronic pain, depression, anxiety, psoriasis, asthma, allergies, obesity, and Alzheimer's disease. No, no. Inflammation. Time magazine did a big uh, uh, article on uh, inflammation. They said that inflammation means to ignite or inflame and basically it's a biological response of the tissues to harmful stimuli such as pathogens, damaged cells, damaged DNA or irritants. It's a response to try to be protective against those types of insults. It's a protective attempt of the body to remove those injurious stimuli and to initiate the healing process, make it well again yeah, but the problem is, is as we get older, the ability for us to do that decreases. We're going to discuss the inflammatory process in a little bit more detail because this is very, very important. <clears throat> First of all, you have some sort of an insult. The insult can be a lot of things. It can be uh, infection, bacterial infection. It can be a viral infection. Some sort of insult comes there. You can be trauma, a cut, or, uh, abrasion. Some sort of trauma can happen, cause an insult there. A toxin, a heavy metal or other toxin can cause an injury. Allergies can cause a, an injury. And what about the, the thing that we all dread is some sort of DNA mu mutation. And if you think about it, we all remember that a cancer cell starts off by a mutated can uh, DNA and then it reproduces rapidly but our immune response helps to decrease those from happening. It has been said that in every day of our life, one of our cells mutates, but our ability to fight off infections, to our immune uh, defenses, goes in there and sees that that DNA is a foreign DNA and kills it before it spreads. So anyway, you've got some sort of uh, insult there, and the insult causes a response. What happens is a bunch of white blood cells come from the blood and start infiltrating into that, to that area to treat the problem. These things are platelets, they're white blood cells, or otherwise called neutrophils or lymphocytes, they're mast cells, they're macrophages. Think of it as you have your little army that's coming out there ready to battle the insult. And so you get a lot of these guys out there, they're battling, they're healthy. They're going to battle the insight. These white blood cells, they secrete factors that kill and degrade uh, the pathogen or the insult. They, they want to get rid of that somehow. In addition, they sort of engulf them. Notice the bottom two, there's a white blood cell, neutrophil, and a macrophage is engulfing some of these, trying to get rid of them. Then they're going to secrete these things called cytokines. The cytokines attract the immune system uh, cells to the site. So you get more of these armies of white blood cells to come out. They're recruiting more of them. And you get more and more and they keep fighting and fighting until hopefully the response is resolved. Or the pathogen is gone and the area is healed and well. Well, as we get older though, our ability to, to do that kind of a, um, a response decreases. Our ability to fight off inf inf infections and other toxins decreases with age. Our, it's harder for our body to fight it off. And the result is it wants to try to put out more of that 
those inflammatory cells so it can get rid of those things. So it puts out more and more, but the ability is down. So the result is, it's kind of like you got your army out there, they're just shooting rifles initially, but pretty soon the rifles aren't good enough. They need more forces, so they start doing bombs. And what happens when you do bombs? You get collateral damage, and therefore the tissues start to get damaged too. And that results in a lot of inflammatory processes. We got arthritis. We've heard about how inflammation causes arthritis. Alzheimer's disease. Once again, nobody wants to get Alzheimer's disease, but part of the pathology with Alzheimer's disease is a chronic inflammation of the cells of the brain. Those are degenerative processes. It happens in the, vein, in the arteries. It happens in the heart. It happens in all the other cells. The inf inflammatory process is, is not a good thing if it's in excess. And as we get older, it tends to get excess, so that's not a good thing. And then plus, this inflammatory response in excess causes free radical formation, and they can damage the tissues even more. So with time, this ex excess inflammation can cause some damage to the cells, cells in the membranes, it can cause damage to the DNA, and results in multiple uh, of these conditions we call degenerative problems. And as I said, this includes arthritis, heart disease, cancers and a bunch of other ones. Well, we want to treat those and try to prevent those with anti-inflammatory products or uh, what we call immune modulators or immune boosters. There's a natural decline in immunity um, and, other, and, and on antioxidant function with aging. And the interesting thing about this slide here in the middle, that's your natural de decline of immunity in the middle, but what is noted is that in the top line, the dotted line, that's when you have a high amount of antioxidants. So you can see it's, the ability is actually higher. It still goes down, but it's higher than normal. And then if you have a low amount of antioxidants, it's lower than normal. You still, both of them go down, they decline, your immunity does decline, but you're better off with a good, good dose of antioxidants through your life. The triggers of inflammation are many. A good old American diet is one of the triggers. I'm going to talk a little bit more about that. Obesity, when we call things have an inflammation, we end up with itis, like arthritis, I-T-I-S, arthritis. Well, there's this new thing called obesitis. It's an inflammation called, caused by obesity. That can cause inflammation. Diabetes can, and that occurs in the microvasculature. You probably heard that diabetes results in blindness in a lot of cases. A lot of people, they get kidney damage, they get heart damage. Those are secondary to the inflammation that occurs in the capillaries, the microvasculature that occurs with diabetes. Inflammation occurs with trauma, mechanical stresses, and then there's genetic factors, and things that we call polymorphism, where you get little defects in the DNA, where you need things like if you have a defect in the uh, uh, metabolism of folic acid, you might need to take a special folic acid in order to do that. Uh, there's food allergies. Food allergies create an inflammatory response, just as toxins and heavy metals do. And that, and that can be a major problem. And then with aging, we have these hormonal deficiencies, and that in and of itself can cause inflammatory processes. And things as, as simple as lack of exercise and sleep increases your uh, inflammatory processes. So they're all triggers to cause problems. As we age, we do have a decline in our hormones. The graph uh, on the right says that uh, over time you get a decreased amount of estrogen, testosterone, uh, you get a decrease in progesterone, DHEA, melatonin, all those things decrease as we get older. Every cell in our body actually does respond to hormonal therapy. Lack of hormones increases the risk of free radical injuries, and the result is that we get an increased risk of those degenerative processes. And so aging increases, and we see it in our practice all the time. When people don't take hormones, they look older, and they feel older. They don't have the best quality of life. So therefore, we like to treat people with hormone therapy because they get a better quality of life, uh, they lose weight, better, they feel better, and a number of things. But putting people on hormones helps out. But that's a theory of aging. That's one of the theory of aging. We'll call that theory three. And now this is the fourth one we're going to discuss, just theory four. Telomere shortening. Our chromosomes have on the very tips of them some sequences of DNA called telomeres. These telomeres protect the DNA. 
when the cell divides, they, they, the DNA separates apart, and, and when it comes together in two different cells, it needs to come together in ni a nice, regular fashion. The telomeres on the tips of the chromosomes help to make sure that when the DNA comes together, it's repaired well, it comes together well, and, and it still functions and works like it's supposed to work. Well, the interesting thing is that every time a cell division happens, the tip of the chromosome, the telomere, shortens. And every time means that they get shorter and shorter and shorter, and pretty soon they're so short that the DNA doesn't function well, it can't replicate, and the cell dies. In other words, aging happens to the cells. Well, the way we treat that is with uh, different, different products. One of them is something called telomerase stimulator uh, or activator. It activates an area on the chromosome that, that forms telomerase. And telomerase, when you take telomerase, when the cells divide and come together instead of the telomere shortening, the telomerase puts it back on so it doesn't shorten the telomere as much. Wonderful stuff, we'll talk about that a little bit more. T telomerase activators, the ones that prevent that shortening, antioxidants, immune modulators, hormones, they can all prevent that shortening from happening. We're gonna discuss that a little bit more because we want you to be younger. You know, you're 50 years old, I'd like to bring that down a little bit. And I think that's a good idea. We can do that with a lot of, a lot of different things. The first thing we'll, we'll talk about that you can do is a good diet. A good diet of fruits and vegetables. It gives you lots of antioxidants, an increase in circulating antioxidants um, through an increased consumption of just antioxidant-rich fruits and vegetables does protect people against cardiovascular disease, decreases ischemic stroke, and does a number of other things that's very beneficial for you. We're talking about the Mediterranean diet. A uh, Mediterranean diet is basically, you got your vegetables, your fruits, you got uh, mostly fishes, very little meats, and uh, maybe olive oil and nuts. That's basically your old fashioned uh, Mediterranean diet, and it's been shown to work very well to improve your life. The Mediterranean diet lifestyle is associated with more than a 50% lower, lower rate of all cause and cause specific mortality, that is death. You can decrease your risk of dying simply by doing a Mediterranean diet. But let's add one more thing to that. Let's not only do a Mediterranean diet, but let's do a low glycemic load Mediterranean diet. In other words, you're going to decrease those excessive carbohydrates, the pastas and the wheats that uh, increase the carbohydrate load and try to stick with the, the fruits, vegetables and fish and, and lean meats as in a Mediterranean diet. And of course, there's a little wine in there too. You know, the Mediterraneans like their wine. And as long as you don't do the excess, a little wine is okay. There was an international study with about 32,000 uh, people in the world for over five years. And they found that there was a decreased risk of death um, from um, cardiovascular disease. There was a decrease of heart disease, 35%, and decreased risk of other things that have to do with the heart, including uh, heart attacks, uh, heart failure, stroke. There was, so they were healthier, they were able to live longer by just doing these kind of diets. Well, a diet means uh, nutrition. And if you have poor nutrition, you're going to have poor health. So there's overwhelming evidence now that vitamins and other essential nutrients uh, deficiencies or micronutrients are associated with the chronic disease process and the overall condition of one's health. So inadequate intake or subtle deficiencies in these increases your risk for these chronic diseases including cardiovascular disease, cancer, osteoporosis, etc. So that what kind of things are we talking about? What are these antioxidants? Well, there's a bunch of antioxidants. As you can see, there's vitamins, A, C, D, and E, uh, B vitamin, glutathione is a big one. Glutathione is maybe one of the best uh, antioxidants in your body. Uh, by the way, glutathione, you can't just take glutathione. You have to eat, you have to take the uh, precursor of it called N-acetylcysteine, which you'll see on the right side there. There's resveratrol. We've heard about resveratrol. Dr. Oz loves resveratrol. And we're going to talk more about that. Quercetin, melatonin, DHEA are big ones. We're going to talk more about all these things. Then a bunch of minerals are good antioxidants too. All these things, <coughs> antioxidants, help um, to decrease the damage that occurs in the membranes and the DNA to help you live longer. For example, there's one study, there's hundreds, thousands of studies out there. 
they, they monitor people. <clears throat> Uh, they found out what, was there antioxidant resistance uh, in the lymphocytes and would they be damaged by H2O2. But the bottom line is kind of a complicated study. DNA breaks were significantly decreased if they just took these vitamins, vitamin C, vitamin E, and vitamin A, A, C, and E. Pretty easy thing to do. So here's some recommendations. Eat more fruits and vegetables, less lean, uh, do lean meats, less, less red meat, more fish. Take a bunch of antioxidants, and they're listed here. We've got omegas. Uh, the omega-free fatty acids are major antioxidants, but they also do uh, an, a boost in your immunity, too. Vitamin C, maybe 1,000 milligrams a day. Vitamin D, vitamin E, resveratrol, DHEA, melatonin, quercetin, turmeric. We're going to talk about all those things. The uh, United States government uh, started off with some recommendations. This has changed through the years, and for good reasons. Those of you who are doing our diet program realize that uh, we don't do grains. We don't do carbohydrates. So the old My Pyramid, if you can see the bottom of it, the U.S. government wanted you to eat a lot of grains. They, they didn't exactly say how, whether it should be whole grains or what, but they wanted you to eat a whole bunch. Well, that went by. My, my pyramid is no longer, then they added something else. The next pyramid was my pyramid, and the uh, period, pyramid added steps, because they wanted you to exercise, but notice the grains are not nearly as much. Well, maybe you don't need that much grains after all. And then they went to the next one. Instead of my pyramid, pyramid they said my plate. And what they did is they basically make your plate cut in fourths, and they say a fourth of it's fruit, a fourth of it's vegetables, a fourth is protein, and then a fourth is grains, and then you add a little dairy for calcium. But you know what? We kind of got rid of most of the grains in our diet and most of the dairy, because a lot of people are allergic to it, and those are extra carbs that you probably don't need. They're not a Mediterranean diet. You get a little grains in the Mediterranean diet, but, you, but the better uh, Mediterranean diet, as I, you recall, was a low glycemic load, and wheat has high glycemic load. And then dairy has a lot of fat, but you don't really need all those extra uh, calories. There's uh, other things that you should do. You should balance your calories, not eat the same thing every day, enjoy your foods, but you want to mix it up. You want to do, you know, half the plate should be fruits and vegetables. Choose, choose different ones, though, and choose different colors, too, because they have different nutrients in them. Avoid fatty acids of excess, you know, pizza, sausage, you don't really need those things. Avoid extra sugary drinks. As a matter of fact, you shouldn't even be drinking juice. If you want to mix your vegetables or fruit, put them in a, one of these blenders that just homogenizes the whole thing, and that way you can eat all the, the uh, fiber along with it. You shouldn't just juice things. But you should drink more water. Another thing, they recommended dairy. Do, but especially low fat. Don't don't try. Don't eat all the excess fat. We even avoid dairy in our uh, diet program because it's really not let necessary. And as I mentioned, people are allergic to it, and we decrease the wheats too. These were their recommendations, and to decrease uh, the sweets. Well, here's another question. We talk about diet, and that's a good thing that you do a good diet. But are we getting enough of the nutrients in our diet that we really need? Well, the reality is the soils that we use now are not quite totally enriched. They cultivate the fruits and vegetables when they're not quite ripe. They haven't re retained their maximum amount of nutrients, so they don't have the, all the good nutrients like we used to have when we were farmers and we picked them right off the vine. Now we are not all farmers, and we get our fruits and vegetables from the store. Well, there has to be picked, it has to be transported, so you've got transportation time and storage time. All those things decrease the nutrients in the fruits and the vegetables, and then you've got to prepare it, and cooking decreases some of it. So these are problems. Are you really getting everything you should be? Is what you see what you're getting? Well, how do you know? Bottom line is you don't know. So I just tell everybody, supplement yourself. Especially if you're doing any kind of diet program, you should supplement. You should take vitamins, and you need a lot of stuff. And how else would you know? Well, there's a lab test. There's a bunch of lab tests that you can do. There's a great lab test uh, that will tell you about your vitamin levels. It'll tell you about your antioxidant levels. It tells you about your amino acids, your minerals. It talks about your fat free fatty acids, your omegas. It's a great test, and it's a test that's easily obtainable. It's just a little blood, and we can send it off. It works 
uh, it, it really helps out to let you know what are you deficient in. And then you can start taking whatever supplements you need. And of course, uh, there's a lot of other different anti-aging compounds that you can take. Here's the lab test that basically does 40 essential micronutrients in your body. We got uh, the vitamins, we got uh, minerals, amino acids, uh, and then you can get the other things like lipids. Uh, and, and another test you can do is telomerase. Or you can find out how short your telomeres are. The telomere test will tell you, are you aging too fast or less fast by the length of your telomere? It's a pretty cool test. A lot of different uh, ways to find out how are you doing, are you going on the right track or not. Because if you get that test, like the telomere test done, and you find out, oh, my telomeres are kind of shorter than they should be, maybe you might want to do something to boost them up a little bit. And there's things that you can do, and we'll talk about that. They did some micronutrient, uh, nu micronutrient uh, tests on a bunch of people, and uh, as you can see on the right side, a lot of percentage of people had low amounts of a lot of different nutrients. And this is just a representative sample. Then you just get some of your blood and we do the lab evaluation for these. We get your vitamins A, B, C, and D, your antioxidant levels, amino acids. Like I said, we can get your lipids, your hormones, etc. Pretty quick test.